of somebody without this person, Ambo PAC would not exist. Uh, the reality is this, we've been needing a PAC, a political action committee that stands up for uh, what we believe in, what we want to see, uh, what's happening in our community. We needed a PAC, but it took somebody to actually make it happen. And um, it's a pleasure, I'll, I'll never forget, it's about five years ago we were at another event and Judge Bill Haddad told me, hey, I'm, I'm looking to get this PAC going. And I said, the minute you do that, I'm in, just let me know. And here we are, roughly six years later, and Pack is here, it's alive, it's well, it's better than ever, and it's because of this person, the Honorable Retired Judge Bill Haddad. Oh, sit down, sit down. I think I'll just sit down now on the head. Thank you. And you don't stand for me, you stand for your children and your grandchildren. That's what we're looking at. Um, we're looking at pretty challenging times right now. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Rush, for doing such a wonderful job tonight. Thank you very much. He's our chairman as well. And Aziza Darwish, your wife, who's been back there uh, taking pictures. Thank you, Aziza. And I would like our board of advisors and executive board for AMBO to please stand up and get a round of applause for you. all your support and help over the years. Come on, all of you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. I was going to call you Mr. Governor. I think I can do that. <laughs> JB, thanks for joining us today, and thanks to your staff. I see, I see Jordan over there, our Jordanian American from downstate, and where's Zareen? Where are you, sweetheart? I shouldn't say that, but Zareen Khan is back there, and I also she's with standing next to Claire Lindbergh, who's been helping us along. Uh, thank you, and all the other advanced people for the campaign. Um, Please sign up for our newsletter in the back. I was told to say that. Before I tell you why we selected and endorsed J.B. Pritzker, I've got to give you the bad news first. Okay? Because you have to know, and we all know, the backdrop for the last two years. You know, after 9-11, uh, we had a news conference at the Chicago Bar Association. Rohi Shalabi stood next to me, and we addressed the backlash against Arab and Muslims in the United States. That wasn't anything compared to what we've seen in the last two years. Candidates are falling over themselves these days to disparage our community with an agenda that started back in the election campaign presidential election campaign of 2015-16. People were talking about surveilling our people, surveilling our neighborhoods. People were talking about profiling our people. People were talking about registering our people, registering Muslim Americans. And there was even talk about internment. How do we know that? Because the Japanese Americans stood up and started to say, whoa, don't talk about internment. We were invited to their meetings. They gave us some advice about that. Zaki Poles back then told us that there was a groundswell of anti-Muslim bigotry that was animated by the Trump candidacy. So let me talk about hate speech and what happens during hate speech and what happens as a consequence of hate speech from these candidates during the time they ran for president. We saw attacks on places of worship, mosques, even churches in the Syrian church, residences, community centers, businesses, weapons of choice, knives, guns, baseball bats, firebombs, rocks, eggs, Molotov cocktails, machetes, feces, animal parts. Many of the attacks targeted our women and our daughters who were wearing hijabs or Sikhs wearing turbans, or whole families, or Indian Americans, Bangladesh Americans, Pakistani Americans, because they thought they were Arabs or Muslims or whatever. All of these were deemed hate crimes. Let me tell you about a few more. Uh, oh, I should also mention, we all recall the murder of those three Middle Eastern dental students in Charlotte, was it? Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina. They were murdered. 
And then there was this uh, restaurant owner in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Lebanese like me, Catholic like me, who was murdered. Who was murdered, and as the killer stood over his body, he called him a dirty Arab and a filthy Lebanese. Hate crimes. Hate crimes at the time of this campaign. It's just a relationship we all have to remember and acknowledge, and we know that J.B. Pritzker is aware of these facts. In the last 15 months, in New York, an imam and his assistant were shot. A Bangladeshi woman was stabbed. Garden, St Garden City, Texas, or, uh, Kansas, there was a plan to detonate four truckloads of explosives in Muslim neighborhoods that was thwarted. Simi Valley, California, a Muslim worshiper was stabbed outside of a mosque. Kansas, man shouted, get out of my country, to an Indian American who was mistaken as an Arab. He was shot and killed. Kent, Washington, man shot a Sikh, shouting, get out of my country. Salem, Oregon, Arab man beaten with a pipe. The man yelled, get back to your country, get out of America. There's an immigration policy for you folks. Where did he get that idea? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Muslim woman beaten and stabbed by a man because she wore a headscarf. Portland, Oregon. Man yelled anti-Muslim slurs at two young Muslim women on uh, the mass transit. When men tried to interfere, they were stabbed. Three men were stabbed. And then there was New York City recently. A man kicked an airline worker, a Muslim airline worker. Here's what he said. Trump is here now. He will get rid of you all. That's an immigration policy of some sort, I suppose. That is a consequence of this kind of hate speech. We've seen Zogby and the Air American Institute issue polling. The most interesting was, at the time, the change of favorable attitudes towards Arab Americans and Muslims. The, the Zogby polling showed that favorable attitudes toward Arab Americans had dropped from 49% to 40% during those two years during that campaign. And favorable attitudes toward Muslim Americans plummeted from 48% to 33%. So I tell you this because this is the atmosphere, this is the milieu, this is the backdrop to when AMVOTE was organized and when AMVOTE met the candidates who were running for governor last March and had the opportunity to meet with J.B. Pritzker. And we identified many reasons for supporting him, and you should know some of them, so I'll give you six of them. Not all of them, just six, and a couple you heard tonight. First reason. J.B. fought to stop hate speech from the get-go. He spoke out against it right away. Any hate speech against Arab and Muslim Americans was decried by J.B. Pritzker. He supported the Ambo Resolution in the City Council of Chicago to condemn it. That resolution passed unanimously. Second reason, J.B. condemned the Muslim travel ban. He didn't just say he was against it. He was down at O'Hare Airport on January the 17, 2017, with fellow attorneys giving advice out to people who are coming in and having a problem getting in the country and formally protesting this Muslim ban. Rauner, what did he do? Well, the Tribune tells us he avoided taking a stand regarding Trump's travel ban and then ended up supporting the ban of bringing Syrian immigrants here because he called them, quote, terrorists reason why we support J.B. Pritzker. Profiling and registration of Arab and Muslim Americans. When the, our executive board last December asked him about registering Muslim Americans, here's what he said, quote, if such a regulation to register Muslims ever came to be, I will be the first person to sign up as a Muslim. J.B. is working to restore the Hate Crime Commission of the state of Illinois. In 2007, it was made law. But when Rauner came in, he refused to fill the 20 vacancies and activate that Hate Crime Commission. So, AMVO supported a resolution before the Chicago City Council 
to restore the hate crime commission, we sent that resolution to the governor's mansion. JB supported that resolution. It passed unanimously. Fifth reason why we endorsed JB Pritzker, you heard part of it already. JB, in order to help our image and help representation in government, has pledged to bring well-qualified Arab and Muslim Americans to serve in his administration. We know his press secretary is an Arab American. Um, when he was chairman of the, uh, um, the uh, Human Rights Commission, his chief deputy, Matt Hamoudi, is an Arab American lawyer in our bar association. I see some of our Arab bar members here today. And then we see also Serene and many other people. I mean, he's just not talking to talk. He's walking the walk. He's already started to do that. He's done it in the past. Fifth reason. I should say six. I can't count too well. Um, in order to enhance our image and help in commerce with our community and our small businesses and big businesses, J.B. Pritzker said he would lead trade missions to the Middle East. He's going to lead trade missions there. You know, he didn't talk enough about himself tonight, so permit me to do it. He also said that uh, he would establish the first trade, um, international trade office for Illinois in that region, in the Middle East. So um, he's a man of action, and these are some of the reasons why we support him. So look, folks. We all know we believe in this great country. We believe in America. I believe in America, and you do too. It ain't perfect, but it's what we have, and it's not a bad country, is it? We believe in our American dream. We believe in our system of government. We believe in our institutions, and we believe in the Constitution of the United States of America when it says that government has a duty to use checks and balances so when Congress will not put a check on this president, and we've seen that, so when the Supreme Court at times will not put a check on this president, and we've seen that, then we have to look at the states and the cities to protect our people from these governmental policies that discriminate against us. And that would be in the way of J.B. Pritzker. He will be our next governor, and I don't say that just because he's leading by double digits, because that's going to get real close. But he's also going to be governor because he's definitely the best person for the job. So in the coming months, the American Middle East Voters Alliance Political Action Committee, AMVOTE, will do its part. We will reach out to our 167,000 registered voters here in Cook County. We will canvass them. We'll send out um, media and uh, phone calls and uh, e email blitzes and whatever the heck we do. We have our media director back there. We'll do our part. Now I ask you to do your part. JB needs your support, and we need JB's support. And shoulder by the grace of God, we'll get you elected.